Hey everyone, in this video I will be replacing a vintage two-prong ungrounded outlet with a new three-prong grounded outlet that will be protected by a GFCI circuit breaker. Most people will resolve this type of issue by using these three to two-prong adapters, but I really don't like these and honestly I wish they were no longer sold. Plus, I would rather fix this in the best and safest way possible. First, I will shut off the breaker for the ungrounded outlet that we will be replacing. Next, let's make sure the outlet no longer has power. Now we're ready to replace it with a modern grounded style receptacle. I'll remove the old cover plate, then with my non-contact voltage detector, I'll ensure there's no other wires on the inside that are live. We can then remove the device. Looks like in this instance it will be a straightforward installation since there's only two wires. I'll unscrew the old connection and then cut the old loops. Next, I'll strip and loop the existing wires. Since there obviously isn't a ground wire, I'll tighten the outlet's ground screw since we won't need it. We can now make the wiring connections. I'll also tighten the unused hot and unused neutral connections. Finally, I want to wrap the outlet itself and the wiring connections with electrical tape since the electrical box is metal. In case the outlet or wires ever become loose, the tape will insulate the metal box from the wiring. The outlet can now be fully installed. I'll also level the outlet while I am securing the screws, and with my receptacle tester, I'll make sure the outlet is snug and won't move around. Lastly, the new cover plate can be installed. The second part of this replacement will be with the circuit breaker. This is a standard type of breaker, and its replacement will be a GFCI style breaker. It has the same functionality as a normal breaker, that being overload and short circuit protection, but of course it also has ground fault protection. Now, you could have replaced the ungrounded outlet with a GFCI outlet to skip the breaker replacement step, but depending on how the circuit was originally wired, the GFCI outlet may not provide protection to the entire circuit, but using a GFCI breaker will ensure the entirety of the circuit is protected, and that's why I normally use them in situations like this. Anyways, on to the replacement. It's a good idea to shut off the main before attempting any breaker replacement work, and now I will remove the live wire from the breaker and cap it, and then remove the old breaker itself. Next, I will need to find the neutral for the circuit. Here it is, and I will remove it as well, and I'll explain why I needed to do this later. This is the new GFCI breaker, and I'll snap it into position. Let's backtrack a second and talk about that neutral wire again. GFCI breakers require a separate neutral connection to the panel's neutral bar, as well as a connection to the circuit's neutral. This is needed in order for the GFCI to detect any leakage current. I'll connect the breaker's neutral to the neutral bar, and I will connect the circuit's neutral to the breaker. Lastly, I'll connect the circuit's live wire to the breaker as well. Now we can restore power to the circuit. With the panel's door back on, let's press the test button and make sure the GFCI is operating, and it is. The very last thing I need to do is add a GFCI sticker and a no equipment ground sticker to the outlet's cover. This indicates the outlet has GFCI protection, but does not have a physical ground wire. And now we can plug in the tester. You can see we have power, but a fault condition. The tester indicates there is an open ground. This is the case because there is no ground wire. But since we have GFCI protection, the outlet is code compliant. That about wraps up this electrical video. Thank you for watching, and please leave a like if you enjoyed it. If there's any questions you have, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. I'm happy this outlet can now safely accept three-prong cords and has GFCI protection in case of any ground faults. That's all for this video. Thanks again for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one.